Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I'm ready to do my first impressions on this bad boy. Uh, this is the Finch Cimarron, and it is the newest model from Finch. I uh, actually got sent two of these from Spencer, who I need to thank. The other one I've already given away as of when I'm filming this. Um, it was kind of a celebratory thing for uh, me starting the podcast, and then also I had some kind of simultaneously hit 6,000 Instagram followers, and so it was really cool that Spencer over at Finch Knives sent me not only this and a brand new 1929 in the new Micarta configuration, um, but then also sent me that knife just to give away. So that was really cool, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It's always fun picking a winner and uh, sending a cool knife to somebody. But this one is mine. Um, so Finch will be linked down below. Awesome dudes. Spencer is super generous, and they sent this to me. Um, but they are also very cool about the fact that uh, they allow me to be autonomous in my review process and talk about the knives openly and honestly and, and just kind of speak truthfully about them even though they're they're sending them to me to review so i appreciate that and uh yeah they'll be linked down below so this is a really uh, kind of a different model for them i think than the other ones that currently exist they it almost seems to me like they've kind of got like two styles that they go with there's the 1929 and the holiday which are bolster locks and then they've got the Runtley and the Tycuna, and now this, that are G10 liner locks. Uh, but this one feels a little different from the Runtley and the Tycuna to me, just in the way that it's set up and kind of the feel of it and the size for sure. This is, I think, actually the longest knife that they've done. I want to say it's slightly longer than the Holiday. But it's, a, it's playing kind of the same game that they normally do. You see a lot of definite, like, finch things happening here but it just feels kind of different in a fun way one of my favorite things so far about it is the way that it all tucks into the handle <laughs> it just looks so clean when it's folded uh, you also get the finch logo there in loom so that will illuminate in the dark if it's kind of been charged a little by the sunlight or even just a bright light uh, which is a cool touch i like that they put that on their knives i think that's on every one of their knives that i own except for the first 1929 that i got i want to say the new micarta one has loom in it now anyway so just some some pretty cool like or a pretty cool feature that they're putting into these but so far with this uh, i've actually had it here now for over a week and the timing was just a little rough in terms of how much stuff I've got in that I'm trying to get carried to finish up reviews on so I just finally let myself carry this for an actual whole day and so now I'm ready to do my first impressions on it because I didn't want to do a first impressions before I'd carried or cut with it but uh, now that I've had this in pocket for a day uh, I can speak about it a little bit and then ultimately I'll be doing a full review once I've had it in pocket at least a good few times that'll be at least a week from now probably a little more based on how many items i'm trying to review right now but yeah we're, we're just kind of getting started with this guy so let's talk about what this knife is made of in terms of its components and then i'll talk about some of my kind of normal <laughs> talking points for knives the things that i judge them by so on this guy you can see we've got a pretty long slender blade here. Um, this is a flat grind, I think. Let me double check that. Yeah, it's just a flat grind, not a hollow or anything. But I'm surprised, I guess because the blade stock isn't super thick and just the way it's ground, it's not crazy thick behind the edge. Could be thinner, sure, but it, it feels like a, a good average thickness for me. Anyway, blade steel on this guy is 14C28N. You can see that marked on this side here. And uh, it also says the model name, the Cimarron. On this side, you just see Finch kind of billboarded there. I like that they use a nice, relatively small font that everything is placed just in those two spots and it looks kind of out of the way. I'm not a big fan of blades that are covered in billboarding, so I think that's a good move. But yeah, 14C28N is a pretty good steal uh, from the limited experience that I've had with it and then also just the testing I've seen done on it. It's not a premium steel. It's not going to be like good M390 or 20CV. It's no Vanex. It's not, it's not LMAX. It's not anything crazy or wild. But for the range that these knives sit in price-wise, I want to say the Cimarron comes in right around the $100 mark. It's a pretty good steal for all the things that you're getting here, everything considered. So 14C28N. And then we have the G10 scales. Like I already said, there's loom set into this side with the kind of finch crest there. But this one has gray G10 on the outside. 
and then it's got yellow G10 underneath that. Then you've got gray again for the back spacer. It's the same exact G10 you get on the scales. So you can see then we've got more gray. So it's kind of like gray on the outside, yellow on the inside, and then you get that final uh, layer of gray for the back spacer. But I really like this G10. It's a very smooth finish. It's a, like a polished G10. And I, I think for the, kind of the nature of this knife, that works well for how this knife feels in hand. I don't feel like I need more texture out of it. I get pr plenty of grip on it the way that it is right now. So I like polished G10 in general, and it's done well here. Um, internally, it is liner lock. So we've got a full liner on the show side, a full liner on the uh, lock side. And uh, yeah, little ceramic detent ball that I can see. There's no internal milling or anything like that. But this knife is pretty slender, and everything is relatively thin, so it doesn't feel heavy to me. Um, and then I guess the last component that I didn't talk about yet is going to be this titanium pocket clip, which is a nice looking touch. My preference is loop over style deep carry clips that come all the way to the end of the knife. That said, for a milled clip, this one doesn't leave that much sticking out of your pocket. I guess it is kind of a decent amount up and down, but since the knife is so slender, it just doesn't seem like there's all that much sticking up. Anyway, so milled titanium clip, and we'll talk about that a little more when I go over carry, but that's what we're working with materials wise. And again, I think for the way this knife is fit together and the price range that it's in, um, these materials are, are good. They're, they're a solid offering. Um, the hardware on it is pretty nice as well. It's another thing I'm kind of looking at. I guess we do have what look like some T6s all over, but they look like good, nice quality hardware from what I can at least see. It looks nice. And then the pivot is going to be a T8. But yeah, so let's go through my kind of typical list of where I'm, what I've found so far. Um, so what I'm starting to find on Ergos is that I like it. I'm not in love with the Ergos of this knife because uh, some of the knives that I love most, I find, just feel like they're molded to my hand, which is interesting because I often rave about knives that are really neutral, and this falls into that category. It's a super neutral handle that I think is honestly going to feel comfortable in just about anybody's hand who holds it, regardless of whether their hands are smaller than mine, bigger than mine, or just like mine. It's just so neutral that your hand can go anywhere, and it's comfortable. There's nothing really like trying to set you into a certain spot on here. Um, so I think that's kind of a smart move. But the handles, oddly enough, that I love most, even though I really appreciate neutral handles for that reason, that I can kind of move all over them, they're comfortable in any orientation. Some of the ones that feel best are the ones that do feel like they're molded for my hand, and they're really like curved and, and shaped to kind of fit in just right. But that's a dangerous game to play, because then they fit less people's hands. <laughs> this is going to fit everyone's hands. And uh, all of the edges on here are really well rounded. Uh, the edges on the G10 are, are nice and chamfered. The G10 itself is smooth. There's no real jimping spots anywhere other than the flipper tab itself, and then a little bit right on the spine in that most typical spot where you'll see jimping. Um, for me, that's uh, the jimping itself isn't too rough, too abrasive to where it's bothering me. I really don't like aggressive jimping, and this isn't too aggressive. It feels fine. Um, flipper tab, same thing, even if I kind of butt up against it with my pointer finger, it's not bothering me. And there's a little bit on the top side too, so you can kind of pinch in on here which I found myself doing a little bit for like kind of more fine cutting tasks. And uh, I mean, so far I've really only opened a few boxes with this. I don't think I've done any, yeah, I haven't done any zip ties yet. I haven't like cut an apple with it yet or anything, but I've cut open a few packages and then I process those packages for the dumpster. So one of them was a really big box, one was kind of a medium, but gone through some tape and some cardboard so far. But uh, like going through the tape and stuff, it's nice to be able to choke up to that spot. And it's not like a full on, forward finger choil, I would feel real hesitant to do this with it, but more so I can kind of pinch in on there, which is nice. Um, yeah, so ergonomically, it, it's pretty good. The neutral handle also means that saber grip, hammer grip are obviously going to be comfortable, but then draw cut, stupid comfortable, really, really works. Um, reverse grip, excellent, like really, really good in reverse grip. Reverse grip draw cut, super comfortable. Every orientation for this handle is going to be very comfortable. Um, yeah, so ergos are, I'm going to call kind of a win so far. I haven't found anything on this knife ergonomically that bothers me. In fact, most everything feels quite good on it. Uh, let's talk about carry next. So I think the 
probably best thing about this knife carry wise is gonna just be really how slender it is this way. It just makes it feel really small in pocket because it is. It's also not overly thick this way. It's not crazy thin, but it feels relatively thin compared to a lot of other knives. Um, it is rather long, but that length I feel like is, is well proportioned for the amount of blade length you get in. So it doesn't feel like unnecessarily long in the handle. And uh, yeah, it just feels like a nice slender, not super light, but relatively light, little-ish knife to carry. Um, if this knife had a thicker blade on it and thicker scales, it would just, it would feel <laughs> totally different. Like that is the, the shining feature in terms of how this feels in pocket is just how narrow they keep it. And, uh, I feel like a lot of knives have scales this narrow, but it's rare that you have one where the blade just sets in completely flush like that. So it just really trims it down. And, uh, yeah, the pocket clip in and out of pocket is very nice, very easy, especially on this smooth scale. It's got good retention, doesn't feel like it's going anywhere once it's in pocket, unless you're deliberately pulling it out. I do wish, personally, that it was deep carry just because I love that, but um, as titanium pocket clips go, it, it worked quite well. So, so far I'm impressed. And I did, um, I carried this in like thicker jeans for most of the day, and then now the rest of the day I've been in basketball shorts, and I've even <laughs> been carrying this in my basketball shorts, it's been fine. So, pretty versatile in that way, I suppose. But yeah, carry is good. Um, not like, not the lightest knife in the world, not the greatest pocket clip I've ever experienced, but overall it's fairly light, it's very slim, and the pocket clip works. So, oh, well, that's good. Um, let's talk about action. So action on this guy is pretty fun. <laughs> um, it's a snappy little guy, and these run on bearings, so it just, the detent I think is dialed really, really well for it. It's like just such a, a crisp, nice break. I feel like at the price point they're playing at, this action is quite fun. It's not, as you can see, totally drop shutty. I'm having to kind of shake it down, but it's smooth all the way. There's no grit in it. Everything feels pretty glossy and it's just, it's fun to sit and flick. Um, in terms of like fidgeting, generally speaking, flippers for me aren't the most like engaging deployment method to sit and fidget with for long periods of time. I just really like middle finger flicking and uh, multiple deployment methods is even better because then I can do multiple things. But for a flipper only knife, this one's fun and it's snappy. And uh, the way that this blade is kind of just like a slim stiletto little thing that comes out of there, I feel like, I don't know, there's a certain coolness about it just like popping out and it's that. So I like the action. It's it's not amazing, but I feel like for what these cost, it's very good and it's totally reliable in terms of deployment. I haven't had a failure on it. I guess if I do like the left EDC, just get it to where it's barely gonna break thing. Yeah, I can get it to not quite deploy all the way, but if I'm <laughs> using this flipper tab, not like a weirdo, I don't have that issue and I, I'm not even gonna count that against it. So action is good. Um, the last category, I guess, is going to be cutting, which I know I kind of touched on, but uh, this blade is really, really um, good for certain things, I'll say. Because it's just so pokey stabby and narrow, I find that this type of blade is really, really good for like hard to reach, like internal packaging components of like toys and stuff that I open a lot, um, being able to get in and cut little rubber bands or small zip ties and stuff and uh, just kind of make incisions into stuff because it is so pokey stabby. And then also for just like being able to hold it in kind of any orientation with these scales being so neutral, I find I can even kind of use it like an extension of my pointer finger and make weird cuts like this. And um, I'm just, I, I've liked the little bit of cutting that I've done with it so far, and I'm looking forward to cutting more with it because the little bit that I did, this factory edge is fantastic. It's a really, really sharp factory edge. The behind the edge thickness is not overly thick. It is a fairly s stubby blade in this direction. Uh, sorry. Obviously it's long, but you don't have much height here. And because it's a flat grind and it's not even quite a full flat, um, it's not going to be like the sliciest knife ever in terms of like processing cardboard and stuff. But I think what they designed this knife for, if I'm not mistaken, I probably should have looked this up before <laughs> talking about it, but I want to say they designed this kind of to be like a, a fisherman's knife in some sense where like if you're 
out for the day fishing and you have a folding knife in your pocket. Not that this is going to be like a flexible little fillet knife, but um, it makes sense for that type of mentality, like a lot of small kind of precise little cuts, getting hooks out and gutting fish and stuff. I think this could work really well for that kind of thing. And uh, the build seems to make sense for me, um, if that's what they're kind of going for. So yeah, the blade I'm liking so far, it's very pokey stabby. I could also imagine if you were to use this for self-defense um, because of that kind of stabby, pokey nature that it's got in this shape, it could be a very good option for that. Um, I'm not an expert in that field, so I, don't, I shouldn't even try to talk about it too much, but um, the blade is, it's slender, you know, and there are certain tasks that it helps to have a slender blade. For me, that's more so like getting into Barbie packaging. <laughs> no shame. That's what I'm doing with knives this slender a lot of the time is opening things like that. But it's nice to have tools that are good at different cutting tasks. And, and this one would be much better at certain cutting tasks than a, a warney wood or a blade that's really tall and flat that would be good for slicing like they're just designed for different things so i'm curious to feel this one out a little more and kind of see how it does but yeah so far I'm, I'm liking it i'm enjoying this knife quite a bit i look forward to carrying it some more experiencing it some more seeing kind of what it's made of but i've been really impressed with finch in general so far they just for like the price point that they come at in at and for how unique they are they're really good knives. I feel like a lot of uh, newer knife companies often try to put out things that are like kind of wild and it's just like to maybe make a statement. And Finch has really found this cool spot where they're, they're making unique knives that are like mostly traditional patterns, but in like pretty much all modern materials and with bearings. And they're not doing it in like a, a weird or cheap way. Like they still feel like they've got the right parts of them being kind of traditional. And even this one, the pattern looks somewhat traditional to me. Like this could have been a slip joint pattern that they've now turned into a flipper. And it just, it, it's, it's fun. It's different. And they're using cool colors. And this one even comes in a bunch of wild colors. So like the one that I gave away was black with gray inside, whereas this is gray with yellow inside. They also offer one that's like a dark green with tan inside. And then they do another one that's like a bright blue with like a lime green inside. And that's just rad that like right off the bat, they come in a bunch of fun variations. And this is the one that stuck out to me the most and uh, seemed the most my speed. But yeah, they're, they're really cool. And they're nice people over there, which is awesome too. So. I really like those guys. Anyways, thanks again to Finch for sending me this and for all of the knives that they've sent me over time. Super, super generous guys over there. I really genuinely appreciate it. So I'm gonna link to Finch Knives down below. And uh, yeah, there'll be a full review on this guy pretty soon, but this has been my first impressions of the Finch Cimarron. So thanks guys, I'll see you on the next one.